All right, we're going to look at practice 2.5 slash 1 using trigonometric ratios to find sides of triangles. And um, we're going to do some problems on the back since you had some class time to work on the front. Um, and just to review before we actually get into the work, um, we learned today about sine, cosine, and tangent. And um, we said there's a little acronym you can use to remember these ratios, and that is SOKOTOA. And I remember that from like 1996, <laughs> 1997. So I don't know, I, it stuck with me. Maybe you'll find it helpful. Um, and we say that just to remember that sine is the ratio of opposite to the hypotenuse, cosine is the ratio of adjacent to the hypotenuse, and I should say the cosine of an angle, and then the tangent of an angle is going to be the ratio of the opposite side of the right triangle to the adjacent side. Um, in geometry, we'll only use these functions with right triangles. Um, it's possible you'll learn later on in a trigonometry class ways that you could use these ratios with other triangles as well. All right, so if you look at the back side of practice, whoops, I was already on the back. Um, I know it's overkill, but I'm going to write that one more time at the top of my paper because I will make the mistake. I often confuse sine and cosine if I don't write that. All right, let's just do a few of these problems together. So number 13, I like to label what we're given. So in number 13, um, I, I know I have a hypotenuse, which is 10. Um, I am looking at my angle that's 36 degrees here. The side opposite is not labeled, and then the adjacent side is Y. So um, the first question you have to ask yourself is which trig function am I going to need to solve this problem? And um, the way that you answer that is look at what information you have and look at what you're trying to find and use the function that corresponds with those sides. So if we look at, we know that the hypotenuse is 10 and we know we're trying to find the side that's adjacent. So adjacent and hypotenuse will use cosine. So I would write the cosine of 36 degrees is equal, and we said cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's equal to y over 10. Um, the next thing we have to ask ourselves is how do I rewrite this so that I can plug it in the calculator because we want to be able to plug in one statement in our calculator. So if you look, um, since y is being divided by 10, in algebra, we know we can do the same thing to both sides of an equation, and by multiplying by 10, we'll undo that division. So the statement we should end up with is 10 cosine 36 degrees equals y. Now when you go to use your calculator, you're going to want to make sure that it's in degrees and not radians, and on a graphing calculator, you can go to mode and scroll down and adjust that. So if you're in radians, you need to be in degrees or you won't get the correct answer. So I'm going to type in 10 cosine of 36 and hit enter. Um, we're going to round this to three decimal places, so 8.090. So y equals 8.090. All right, question number 14. In number 14, we if we look at what we have, we have a hypotenuse um, from 64. This is my adjacent side that's not labeled, and y is on the opposite side. So again, um, to think about what trig function we want to use here, we know we've got 64 degrees, hypotenuse, and opposite side. We don't know or want to know anything about the adjacent side right now. So opposite and hypotenuse, I'm going to use sine. So the sine of 64 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse y over 8. This is a lot like the problem before where we had y over 10. So when we get um, a ratio where the variable is on top, you can count on that we'll always multiply by the bottom number on both sides. So when I multiply by 8, I now have 8 sine of 64 degrees equals y because that multiplication got rid of that 8, and then we multiplied by 8 on the left also. 
All right, so from there, and just to be clear, these are the two things I wanna see in your paper. So when I tell you to show your work, this is what I mean. Um, but we do have to rely on a calculator to get these um, final answers. So eight times the sine of 64, and then we'll hit enter, and we get 7.1903. We will round that to 7.190. All right, number 15. All right, number 15, we have our hypotenuse from 48 degrees. Our opposite side is blank, and our adjacent side is 8. So if I am looking for my hypotenuse, given my adjacent, I know that I'm going to use cosine, because I'm going to use the ratio of adjacent to hypotenuse. So I would say that the cosine of 48 degrees equals... And we said it's always adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's okay if you get 8 over y, but now we're going to have to do something different. And um, we talked about this in some different ways in class, but um, if we want to get, like, we want to get y by itself, um, you could think of multiplying both sides by y first. That would give us kind of two steps to do. The way that I kind of talked about it in class is that we could think of this as a proportion. Um, I could think of the cosine of 48 over 1 is equal to the ratio 8 over y. And in unit 2.3, we said that we could swap anything diagonally in a proportion. Um, we can either switch what we call the extremes or the means. So I could end up with um, really another true proportion if I switch my di anything diagonally. So what helps us here is we can switch cosine of 48 with y. And when we do that, we now have the statement y over 1, which is just equal to y, is going to equal 8 divided by the cosine of 48. So y is equal to 8 divided by cosine of 48. And usually, we'll end up with one of these two, like it'll either be multiplication, like the last two problems, or we'll see something like this where we're dividing by that trig function. You can still type it just like that in your calculator. So 8 divided by cosine 48, and you don't even have to close the parentheses if we're not putting anything else in there. So we get 11.9558, and we will round that to 11.956. All right, let's do just a few more. Well, you can stop the video whenever you want. Um, we got to get to a tangent problem. Let's do 16, and then I think I see a tangent in number 17. All right, so in number 16, we've got 72 degrees. Um, my hypotenuse is right here. I've got my opposite side is blank. My adjacent is 3. So if I look at what I know, I know my adjacent. I'm finding my hypotenuse. I'm using cosine again. So cosine of 72 degrees is equal, we said adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's equal to 3 over y. All right, so again, this, this problem is going to be a lot like the one we just did. So we get 3 over y. So I'm not going to multiply by 3, but instead I'm going to swap the y and the cosine of 72. So y equals 3 divided by the cosine of 72 degrees. And so when you go to plug that in your calculator, 3 divided by cosine 72, we should get 9.708. So 9.708. All right, let's do number 17 together, and then I think we'll think you'll be good to go after that. I bet you can do the rest by yourself, no problem. Um, so in number 17, we have this 40 degree angle. Um, the hypotenuse is blank. Opposite of the 40 degrees is y. Adjacent to the 40 degrees is 8. All right, so now if we look at what we're given, we're given the adjacent, finding the opposite. Finally, a tangent problem. Been wanting to use tangent. All right, so the tangent 
of 40 degrees is, and remember, now the order here really matters, opposite over adjacent. We don't want to switch those. So y over 8. So the tangent of 40 is y over 8. All right. This is going to be like those first two problems we did where we had the variable on top. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. So I'm kind of running out of room. I'll write it over here. I'm going to get 8 tangent of 40 degrees equals y. So I go to my calculator, 8 tangent 40. I get 6.7127. I'm going to round to 6.713. 6.713. All right. Um, I'm going to stop there because I think you can do the rest on your own. I just want to point out when you get to 22, 23, and 24, don't panic like you're just going to get some decimals. It's fine. You're still doing the same thing. You'll just have decimals in your answer. So you'll take the, in this case, for example, the tangent of 42, or sorry, 47.2 degrees. Um, it'll be the same procedure, you just have different numbers. So do your best and I'll see you soon.